Okay, episode number 37 with Adi Abasolo once again. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Okay. How you been, man? Oh, I've been amazing. Still in Thailand, training like at one of the best gyms right here. So, nice. yeah, life is pretty amazing. That's what's up, man. Living the dream. Yeah, yeah. living the dream, kind of. So, <laughs> <laughs> you have some exciting news on maybe, well, you have exciting news twice so yeah. i don't know which which one is the most exciting for you the opening of your i think own own gym or like co-owned gym or the fact that you're fighting again um both man uh, i would say it's more it's not one or the other it's both together you know what i mean um yeah the fact that I co-own a gym, you know, that's like, I've always dreamt of uh, having my own gym. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm co-owner with uh, my friends, John, Tim, and Darren, you know, um, and man, it, it's just amazing. You know what I mean? Like the people that uh, that we've attracted, the, um, the culture that we're, you know, just trying to build, everyone's just helping each other and just there to train, you know what I mean? Um, and just get better, you know? And yeah. um, with, with that, the reason why I'm going deep into that, uh, a bit into that, is because that's what makes me extra excited for my fight, you know? Um, the fact that I have a team that I can rely on, you know what I mean? Uh, and it's like, we're, we're just doing it together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and this fight, um, I'm fighting Richard Abraham. Um, he's a very good opponent, man. You know, it's a, it's, it's a very good first fight representing this gym, uh, the Resistance Fitness Center. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I'm excited. Oh it's, yeah, it, it sounds like two. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just two halves to the one. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds it sounds pretty interesting what you're doing over there. So, how did you come up with the idea to start the gym right now? Because I assume you still wanna you still wanna compete. Yeah. Um. Well, like I said, I'm I'm a, a co-owner. You know what I mean? Yeah. We all help each other. Uh, we all play our part. You know what I mean? Everyone brings something to the table. Mm -hmm. Uh. We look out for each other if if one needs, you know what I mean. And if I, everyone still wants me to fight. Everyone who I'm with, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Who, who I own the gym with, like yeah. we all know the plan. We all talked about it uh, as we were opening up the gym. Um, whatever adjustments need to be made, we'll make mm -hmm. them. You know, mm -hmm. um, and like everything. Everything is just uh, the chip just falling where in the right spots at the right mm. time for some reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, even opening up a gym during this time, you know, like during these times, COVID yeah. down this and that. Um, I, I I don't I don't know what. Uh, I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. I got family over. That's okay. <laughs> um, where was I? <laughs> uh, starting a gym during like the COVID things. That's kind of risky. Oh yeah, yeah, man. It it actually started with um, John. Uh, he started training. Um, you know, just holding, hosting, whatever you want to call it. You know, just picking a location. And saying, "Oh, you, know, you guys are uh, we're going to be training out here." Who was mm -hmm. welcome? To come. It was outside, as long as everyone was a certain amount of feet apart. When it was, you know what I'm saying? All that. Yeah. Uh, and it was just a small group of them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I would make it out when I can, but they were consistent every Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the group just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then eventually, um, Tim 
came into the picture. And then, you know what I'm saying? Uh, those two started talking. We started talking. And, you know, elbows were just starting to get rubbed. And, then, you know, the idea came up. And it was just like, man, let's do it. Even in the process of going through it, it was like, man, are we really doing this? Oh, oh okay. Then, like, one mm. another brick would be laid. Then another brick would be laid. And it's like, mm. you know, we got a facility. And, you know, we're, we're busting down walls. We're painting. We're doing all this other stuff. And it's just like, man, it's it's really happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we just got showers put in. So it's like, man, this is... You know what I mean? Every day, something's being accomplished. Small things mm. here and there, but yeah. uh, it, it's just like what the ball is just rolling. That's all mm. I'm saying. I mean, the ball is just rolling. Um, I don't know exactly why we were crazy enough to do do it during this time. Yeah. But like I said, the chips were just falling um, at the right places at the right times. You know what I mean? And I, like, yeah. I'm just so thankful for for everything that's happening and that is continuing to happen. Mm. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that because like sometimes just taking a risk, whether it's like big or small, that's sometimes just a kind of like something that's that's depending on your perspective, but like sometimes you take a risk and it, it ends up paying off so well. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, man. I I agree. Um when you just let go, you know yeah. what I mean? Like what we what do you what do we really have to lose? Like any any of us, not just saying me and um my team. Mm. What do any of us really have to lose, you know? Um and um the shutdown opened a lot of people's eyes to that, you know what I mean? A lot of things happened during the shutdown, it's funny, you know? Mm. People started to appreciate going outside more once the shutdown happened. People mm. wanted to go outside now. You know what I mean, and do outside activities and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it it wasn't all good. You know what I mean? Like yes, it's, it showed people's true color, some people's true colors. You mm -hmm. know, um, it made people start relying on themselves, which is a positive. You know, but also it came with a, a lot of uh, some tragedies as well. Some people couldn't take it, and you know what I mean. They just ended yeah. up saying forget it and you know what i mean uh, yeah the side rate went up stuff like that you know what i mean um yeah but it, it's just like i'm just thankful that this uh this decision and the shutdown just ping-ponged us in this direction mm. you know what i mean in a positive direction yeah it's like man, really the world shut down what what else do we got to lose you know what i mean yeah yeah at that point nothing yeah yeah so you're obviously coaching as well, right? Yeah. How do you how do you combine like training because you have a fight coming up and also coaching? Like how do you find the the energy, I guess, to yeah. to balance all things out? Because obviously you have like training, coaching, but you also have a family, mm -hmm. and other things. Um, it's a everyday search mm. uh, as far as balance goes. You know, um, every day is different because, um, you know, maybe my kids need a little bit, whatever they're going through, whether it's school, whether it's whatever they're frustrated with, you know, um, who knows? Some days uh, they may be more frustrated than others, or some days they just may miss me more than others. And I have mm. to keep that balance and I have to know how to feel that. Same with my wife, you know, and, um, I just can't assume, oh, they love me, they know I love them, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, yeah, I'm at the gym, they know I love them, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Um, I have to feel when I'm, when the time is being spread thin, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, keep that balance with my family. And on the same coin, I need to understand that, yes, I do acquire certain abilities in fighting, uh, in my art, but I, um, uh, I, no matter how much I know or any of us know, nothing is perfected without repetition. You know, mm -hmm. I need to make sure I get my training. I'm keeping honest with that. It, it's hard, uh, with 
overtraining, you know what I mean? Being yeah. so connected to your family, you know, just stuff like that, how to keep that balance, you know? Mm. Um, but as far as putting teaching in the mix, it's just, it's just another way of training. Mm -hmm. If I can explain what I do, you know, I'll do some bag work. If I could explain what I was just doing on the bag, yeah, and get people to understand it, mm -hmm. um, and not that they would do it like me, but taking the concept that I'm trying to teach and they do it in their own way, mm -hmm. uh, I know I'm on the right track. It, it just makes everything that much more sharper, you know. Mm. So, I just try to look at it as a part of training. If I look at it okay. as I got to teach, it, it starts to look like and feel like work to me. And I'm, mm. oh, man, I got to teach. Oh, yeah. God, man, I got to teach. You know, it's just like, it's equivalent to a three-mile light jog, you know. Mm -hmm. it's coasting with my, with my brain. I'm, I'm not trying to overthink or trying to... Uh, Try to make sure that what I what I'm giving away is oh this is I gotta make sure I give away gold. It's like nah, mm. you know, keep it simple. Whatever I'm, whatever I know, I just teach what I know. And if I can get the point across, then I'm just sharpening my mind for you know for what I'm trying to accomplish. Mm. And uh, in regards to giving away gold, that you're obviously known as a as one of the slickest fighters in the states. Mm -hmm. So how do, how do I mean? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> You're amazing to watch, but um, how do you how do I how do I put this? How do you deal with people who ask you like to teach you the the slicky things? Be because in the end, they're all about basics. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I feel like you kind of answered the question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> once, if ex if the basics are explained in a correct manner, you know what I mean? Um, then through the basics, if I can get you doing the basics, then I can point out the times where to switch up your basics. You know what I'm saying? To make it uh, sophisticated in a way. You know? It's not fakes and faints. Like one thing I always tell everyone is fakes and faints aren't setups for the basics the basics are set up for the faints and fakes you know mm -hmm. because unless you respect my jab you're not going to be faked by my jab you know so i need to make sure that i have a good jab if i have a yeah. good jab then i can fake it'll be much easier to fake it and that goes along with any other uh weapon if i just come out the gate yeah. and i start trying to fake stuff without um uh, without earning its respect yeah, I might get a, a response, but more likely, um, I feel like it's engraved more when I can touch you with a leg kick before I fake a leg kick versus trying to fake it and then touch with something else, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the tips that I remember you gave me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. I, I even took a print screen and I put it in my favorites just to keep it as a, <laughs> just to keep it as a reminder because... It's, it's, I, I would say it's like more tempting to start faking and to try to figure somebody out. But in the end, you have to, yeah, you have to touch them. Yeah. And, um, e even though in my, in my opinion, whether it lands or not, if, if it's thrown with intent, they're going to feel it and respect mm. it to it, you know? Yes. So do you, do you have a title fight coming up right now? Yeah. Yeah, you've been out of the ring for over a year now, I think. Um, for sure, over a year. I don't know the exact time though. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about having such a long layoff? I it, it don't mean nothing to me, uh, okay. because I remember um, my longest layoff for sure was two years. Okay. Maybe two years then change. But um, it was uh, sorry. Could you repeat? I said it was one of my best fights. The first okay. fight back. It's one of 
best fights of my life, you know, only because I've been training so much. I was in, I was, uh, I had teammates, and whenever they were in camp, yeah, um, I was in their camps, you know. Uh, I was training with them. Um, I do whatever they're doing. I'm doing it with them just to have. Uh, just so they can have someone there because I know how much it means, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Someone there in the camp. Um, and it's funny because through those camps, uh, it was funny because they were having fight after fight after fight after fight. This person was fighting, that person was fighting, the next person was fighting. So it was just camp after camp after camp. So I was always in camp. Mm -hmm. uh, and each person had a fighter that that had different attributes. Mm -hmm. So I had to mimic. Or I would do my best to mimic whoever they're, they're looking for. And uh -huh. through that process, I got good at those things. Mm. You know? So I feel like uh, my training kept me sharp. So when it was time to fight, I was just I was like, man, I got all these tools, man. You know, it's like, let's go. Mm. Let's play. Okay. <laughs> was that the, the Sweda fight? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could see you were having fun in there. Yeah, heck yeah, man. That's <laughs> <laughs> <Back> my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there, there's no, like, mental process to you having a long layoff? Or maybe, maybe it's better to go back to, like, the first layoff you had, like, after three years. There was not, like... A part of you that was like, oh, I'm, I'm fighting again. It's a long time ago. Uh, no, not really. Okay. Yeah, because, again, you know, I'm teaching. I'm mm -hmm. always training. My mind is always on the fight. My mind is always yeah. on someone in front of me. Um, so it's like, I'm always training. I know what I can do. I'm always in the, in the gym trying to sharpen my sword, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I'm always ready. I'm always ready. Whenever, uh, whenever I get to fight, I just look at it as an opportunity for you guys just to see what I do all day. You know, mm. it's not necessarily me trying to perform well. It's mm. just everyone getting to see what I do all day. The only thing that changes is the scenario around me. when I'm on mm. back. Shadow boxing, if I'm sparring, if I'm hitting pads, if I'm in the fight, I'm doing the exact same thing I'm doing in the ring with the lights off in front of a bag that I'm doing with the lights on me with someone in front of me. That's, mm. that's just, I'm trying to visualize it, you know? Mm. Um, when you when you train, you you focus a lot of base uh, on the basics, but back yeah. in the past, you, back in the past, you have uh, worked with Barry Robinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, have like all his, uh, have like all his DVDs. Um, yeah, 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 it's very good stuff. How much, how much did he influence you? Um, he influenced me a lot in a way that uh, he showed me a, a few things, you know, like how he likes to do things. Mm. I showed him, uh, um, he. He was open to hear how I do a few things. We mm. kind of put our things together uh, in some cases, you know what I mean? Um, and, and it was just tight. We, I feel like we clicked because um, I'll shadow box and just be in the ring for like an hour, sometimes okay. two hours, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just come in there and I'm lost, listening to music, moving around. Uh, mm. Shadow boxing, you know what I mean? Like visualize me moving around there with someone or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Certain that I'm trying to play while I'm in the ring. Um, and he uh, showed his way of doing mm -hmm. stuff. Um, it, was a, it was a bit reassuring because I'm like, all right, cool. This is someone who knows what he's doing. And, yeah. Um, I do similar methods, you know what I mean? So I'm on the right track. Um, mm -hmm. but his, uh, the way he was, he's about trapping and this and that. Oh man, it's amazing. It's amazing. Just, it yeah. makes the fight easy. You know what I mean? Easier, not easier. Easier. Yes. 
But I yeah, mean, def- through competition, the better we get, it will be easy. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely good at like controlling, controlling people. Yeah. So it's all about. So how how far are you out now from your from your next fight? Um, I believe four weeks. Four weeks. So it's kind of like the last the last sprint towards the fight. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess you could call it a sprint. Really, it's just I'm just hitting every day as as efficiently as possible. Well, I'm trying to. You know? Um, through camp, I'm um trying to find that balance to where um I'm pushing, but I could mm-hmm. still change the next day. You know, yeah. um, in the beginning of camp. I was so motivated and so ready to hit the ground, running, sprinting, that I had to take the next, after three days, I had to take the next three days off, because mm. I trained so hard the first three days. You mm. know what I mean? Just, you ever yeah, train so hard on Monday, you're like, yeah, I'm going to kill it this week, you know? Yeah. And Monday, you train hard, like, yeah, I killed it. Tuesday, you train even harder, and then you just start to lose steam, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that... That happened to me, so I was like, "All right, cool. I need to just day by day feel how um, assess how I feel, and then mm-hmm. I go off of that." You know. Mm-hmm. Do, do you design your own program now for the fight, or do you have like a head coach, strength conditioning coach? Yeah, yeah. Um, Zach is uh, he's our strength and conditioning coach. Okay. Um, I got uh, my buddy, uh, Body by Bobby. That's that's his IG. Uh, Bobby, he's helping me out with my meal plan, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got what whatever we need to do as a team, you know, uh, whether the people are going to hold pads for me or I'll hold pads for them. You know, we'll do like 50-50, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'll give you some, you give me some. Um, we'll do drills bag work or we just get together and just you know what I mean do bags together do do drills do it's just every day is a uh just like fight camp every day is a an adjustment of course we have a plan um but every day is different depending on how we feel mm. do you like it more when you're kind of like self-reliant when it comes to training for a fight because for example at PK Senchai this is the thing that I love so much about the gym when I arrived, they basically were like, okay, you run, but you decide how long you run. So I was like, okay. So I did my warm-up, and then we're like, okay, you hit pads for five rounds. And after that, after the, the pads, it's like you can decide if you do clinching or sparring, depending on how you feel. But aside from that, you're like free to do whatever you want, even if you're well. Unless you're in a fight, sometimes one of the trainers will stand next to you when you hit the back. But aside from that, you're very free. And I kind of like that. Yeah, I, I like the freedom. Um, to some degree, uh, it definitely makes it easier when people are, are watching what I eat instead of me watching, I mean, not watching what I, but, uh, like giving me a plan, you know, Mm. instead of me trying to like develop it on my own, um, definitely helps having someone helping me with my conditioning definitely helps. Oh yeah, for sure. Trust me, bro. Like there, there's times where I'm just like. More times than not, I'll admit that I'll show up for conditioning and just the whole time I don't want to condition, you know? Um, I mean, that if I'm going to do it yeah. in each round, I'm, doing, I'm going as hard as uh, efficiently possible, you know? Uh-huh. As I I'm not lacking it, even though I don't want to do it. If I'm going to mm. do it, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. not going to have it. Um... But just having someone holding me accountable, you know what I mean, on my technique, if my technique is lacking during conditioning or my numbers or, or whatever, you know what I mean, to have someone on you, it, it definitely helps give me that push. Um, mm. And there's, but there's some things that I'm, I'm sure that I'm just playing on with myself. My bag mm. work, I, I make sure I get my bag work, my clinch work, I'm, you know, I'm always... Uh, I'm always trying to grab someone, or uh, that's what's dope about the gyms. Someone's always trying to grab me, 
you know? Mm. Like, hey, I clinch for, for uh, you know what I mean, a couple of rounds. Mm-hmm. There's times where we can't get a whole 30 minutes. We'll just, you know, squeeze it in when we can. Um, but I feel like um, half-half. In some areas, it feels it feels good to have that freedom. Mm. Um, in other areas, I know I probably uh, would be less responsible with that power in my hands. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Especially, I would say, for me, for conditioning, too. That's why I I work with Don Heatrick. Oh, okay. I, yeah, it's just easy. He just lays everything out for me five days yeah. a week. And I just, fo- I just follow it. I, like, I've never met him, but I, he always responds to my messages. So that's pretty yeah. amazing. But like, otherwise, I wouldn't know what to do for conditioning, to be honest. Yeah, especially if you don't like working. You know? Or if, yeah, at least me, I can't speak for no one else, but yeah. if I feel like working out, then I'll just come up with some easy conditioning or something. Yeah. <laughs> pretending, <laughs> yeah, pretending to do the work, and it looks like you work, but you're actually not working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, understand, I understand perfectly what you mean. <laughs> Yeah. Or, or doing it like the Thai style. I've seen this a lot in like the Thai gyms, where they just do like these endless runs, which mm-hmm. kind of they're very boring, like long, long runs, and then just random, random exercises. Like yeah. at peak, yeah. at peak, at PK, the trainers just lay out gyms, and in the beginning they were like, "Do you want to join?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. Whatever the fighters do, I'll I'll do too." Yeah. And, uh, and I, I was like looking what they were doing just to follow what they were doing. And they all did a different exercise with like the set of weights. And I was like, oh, so it's up to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of weird that is, there's not a lot of structure when it comes to that. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's all on the individual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. So after, after one Thai style camp, I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe it's time yeah. for a conditioning coach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because like they don't understand you've been in Thailand too right yeah did you did you go to like a fight camp or did you just train um, here I was at Sissang Pinang okay yeah 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 man that was fun that was oh, fun yeah. They, uh, it, it was hard because um the pad work was rough you know what I mean because yeah. Man, I didn't realize um, how much I didn't know. I mean, not that I didn't, not that I thought that I knew it all, but mm-hmm. I didn't realize how much I didn't know, like the little things. I remember yeah. I was kicking the pads, and Moonlit was like, harder, bang, harder. Bang. He's like, come on, man, harder. And I'm just, mm-hmm. like, kicking my hardest, and he's just making me feel like a total girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> Because they can kick hardest. That was, yeah. that was a horrible excuse you know, uh, comparison, but you understand what I'm yeah. trying to say. I, I understand. <clears throat> but, yeah, man, the it was more fun. Since it was so fun, the, the hard was, uh, I was willing to do the hard, you know. Mm. What did you, what did you take away from being here? I don't know how long you were here, 